Ms. Imran from Options Insight. Due to the incredible interest that I've had from people asking me about crypto options, once I've told them I've become active in the space, I thought it made sense to start making videos about crypto and crypto options specifically. Now, I'm not a blockchain or crypto expert, but what I am is an options expert. And since June, I've been trading Bitcoin and Ethereum options with my own cash, and I've managed to 5x it. I've also managed to do that in a way where my risk was super controlled and I wasn't going to lose a hell of a load of money. So the idea of these videos in this new series, which I'm going to call Crypto Insight, is to talk you guys through some of the strategies and ways that I'm trading crypto options and taking advantage of my knowledge of trading volatility, term structure, skew, and being able to manipulate those positions to give myself some edge and give myself some advantage in the way that I express my views to participate in these crazy wild swings that crypto markets can have. Being a vol trader, I'll tell you now, the most exciting and the most fun assets to trade, volatility, are the ones that know how to move. And right now, there's no other asset class that knows how to move like crypto. So with that, I hope you enjoy this video. Please subscribe to the channel if you like this content. And feel free to sign up for a free trial to Macro Insight, where you'll get this type of content. You'll also get other asset classes and you'll get live Q&A. So you. let's, let's, uh, let's talk about crypto now. So what's been happening in the last week? So, I mean, it's been about as bullish as it could possibly be on the news front on, on crypto. So last week we had talked about, you know, how Bitcoin had taken leadership back uh, and that was catalyzed by Elon Musk saying he bought a billion and a half of Bitcoin. Um, and now he's, so he's fully endorsing the space. He's getting involved. It's, um, you know, that got everyone excited. And Bitcoin obviously had this move up um, through through the highs of 42 and, and it pretty much has gone on to to, to to get just get its nose just above 50,000 now okay now after that first explosive move it has stabilized we, we didn't quite smash through 50 in quite the spectacular fashion that you might have thought we were going to um, and we're going to talk a bit about that and what that kind of the implications of what that means right so you can see if you look at the chart here, we've been making new highs. So we had that explosive move there, which was, you know, had a load of momentum on it. But then as you've eked out new highs, you see that momentum has been waning, right? So for me, that's obviously not generally a good sign where I see momentum divergence. I see higher highs in the spot price, but I see lower highs in the momentum indicator. That tells me things are starting to get a bit exhausted, okay? So Bitcoin showing signs of exhaustion around that 50,000 area. And that 50,000 area is a bit of a psychological kind of target for a lot of people. It makes sense that there might have been people who got involved at 10,000, 20,000 who are happy to let some of this stuff go at 50. So may maybe that's partly what's coming into play here and putting a bit of a lid on the market. Okay. Um, you've also had Ethereum, similar sort of story, right? Uh, it's been eking out highs around this sort of 1870 area, but look at the momentum, right? It's definitely running out of momentum. So it's definitely showing signs in both of those uh, that momentum is getting exhausted. If we look at the spread between Ether and Bitcoin, you know, that's not looking great for Ether, right? Um, that's obviously topped out uh, in the whole Ether speculation for the futures listing. And now that's come off. So that's, that is showing you, yeah, I mean, not, not an immediate rush, I wouldn't say, to buy into Ether right now. Yeah. Um, if you look at the dominance, Bitcoin dominance chart, it's going to show you same sort of story. That dominance was falling um, whilst, you know, Ether and the alt space was all rallying. And then lately that's had that uptick um, in dominance. Uh, as we said, right, you know, the leadership has moved back towards Bitcoin, right? But that doesn't necessarily mean that that's great for the whole space because you might get a situation where everything corrects, Bitcoin corrects less because it's like the safe haven within the space. And then the higher beta stuff like Ethereum and the altcoins get smashed. And you actually see this dominance go creep its head back up towards 65 before the correction's over, right? So I'm starting to fav favor a bit of a correction in the space. Um, even though we've got to this 50 grand level. Um, 
And then an another reason why I'm getting a bit nervous about it and is, is the volatility price action, right? So, you know, if you're breaking to new territory and new all-time highs in an asset and vol is bid, yeah, and that means people are scared of the next move. They think that they think it's going to scream higher and they're trying to buy options to participate, all that type of stuff. That makes you think, yeah, this move might have legs basically, right? But the problem is you're not getting that. You're getting actually vol coming down. And I'll, and I'll show you. So there's a 30 day vol. Okay. So, you know, today it's had a little bit of an uptick, but in general, over the last week, you can see it's come down, you know, Bitcoin, Bitcoin March vols gone from about 115 to like 110 on this break. Right. And generally, you know, you, that's not what you like to see when the in Bitcoin, when the market's breaking in spot to new highs, you want to see that vol going bid. That's what you've historically seen. Right. Whereas now you're not seeing that. So that's the, it's kind of the vol market giving you a tell that actually people are quite happy to sell the upside right now, whether that's because they already own the market, like these guys who put billions of dollars into Bitcoin, maybe they're the ones who are selling call options and putting pressure on the vol market. Or maybe it's just the dealer community in the vol market saying, well, we think this thing's capped at 60K or whatever, or we think it's going to, you know, it, it's not like the street doesn't look like it's panicky on the upside, basically, right? So, so that tells me that a correction may well be sort of due, yeah? And then what I've basically done on the back of that is um, restructured some of my positions, right? So I had positions in some call ratios. Um, yeah, some call ratios I had, I think 38, thousand fifty two thousand call ratio that had done pretty well i took profit on that i took that off um, and i reinvested a little bit of that money into a cool ladder i'll show you that cool ladder on screen so same expiry so i just kept it on because you know i wasn't sure if we were going to break 50 in style or not i was starting to lose faith that we were going to break 50 and even if we broke 50 i wasn't sure it was going to be that violent so i basically took off my trade and I restructured it into the 50, 54, 60 call ladder. So I'm long one of the 50,000, short one of the 54s, short one of the 60s. So the most that I can make in that structure is gonna be 4,000, which is the difference between these. And I'll start to lose money. I'll start to give my money back if it goes above 60,000 and, and, and I'll get back down to zero if it goes above 64,000, where I would give that 4,000 back basically, right? So my plan, here, well, my, my view is that, whereas we may continue rallying into the mid fifties over the coming 10 days, remember these expire in 10 days. So we may have another 10% in us. I don't believe we're gonna smash through 60,000 and, and I get a pretty nice payoff profile for that structure. So when I put that structure on, and you could probably put it on now for a similar price. So that's worth about a thousand. That's worth about two, two, three. Yes, but you could probably spend about $500. So for a $500 spend, you've got a potential gain of, of 4,000 minus that. So you've got three and a half thousand you can make for a 500 spend and you don't get into any trouble unless we smash through 60, 63 and a half thousand in 10 days, right? So for me, that call ladder looks pretty good. I like the odds of success. I like the payoff ratio. And it's a, for me, it's a nice way to continue owning some upside participation and take a load of profit on a structure that I had that could obviously have lost a lot of money back basically because it had made about seven grand and that seven grand was at risk if the market rolled over basically, right? So that, that's kind of what I've done there in terms of February. And in terms of March, I was long some March upsides in the 80,000 area. And as I'm starting to lose, lose confidence in that violent upside break, I just took two thirds of the position off, right? So I bought these marches when they were worth five or $600. They doubled. I was happy to let two thirds of them go and then just run, run one, one contract just for, just for fun to see, see what it does basically right now. If it goes back down towards 600 where I, what I paid for it over the coming weeks, then maybe I'll dump it and take my money back. But there's no harm in having a, a, one of those on, even if my conviction has dropped a bit, because, you know, it's just nice to have some of that convexity on the book, basically. 
Yeah. And then on top of that, I've also got one contract of the 40,000 puts, which is my systematic hedge, which I tend to always have either a put or a put spread on the book in that kind of um, four to six week time frame to protect my overall equity position in Bitcoin to prevent me from, you know, giving a load of money back if Bitcoin decides to kind of halve in a matter of a week, which which we know it is capable of, basically. Yeah. So that, that's kind of where I am in Bitcoin. In Ethereum, I've dialed myself down as well. I've still got my underlying exposure to that, but I don't really have any, any tactical longs on. I am still short volatility in Ethereum because I think Ethereum vol is expensive and will probably continue to come down. So I'm expressing that short vol by some put spreads that I'm short in March and some calls that I'm short in March. Uh, that vol on average is about, where is it? Um, I think it's around 140. So the upside vol is around 140. The uh, the put spreads are on a, about 130. So I'm nicking a bit of premium out of that stuff. And that's quite out of the money stuff that I'm short. I've already made some money on that. So it's a case of taking profit at some point and then maybe rolling it to longer maturities. But the fact that it's March options, it's still a good kind of six weeks away. So I feel like maybe in the next two weeks, I'll unwind it and roll it to April if I still think vol's expensive. But right now I'm happy to kind of leave it on the book basically. But in general, another thing, reason why I'm a little bit less optimistic is just because in the face of all the bullish news that I'm seeing on crypto, you know, you've got Morgan Stanley talking about betting on Bitcoin. They've got like some investment arm called Counterpoint Global where they're talking about investing in Bitcoin. You've got the Miami governor talking about putting through legislation where people can get paid salaries in Bitcoin and stuff like that. So you've got some serious adoption going on all over the place and yet momentum is running out in the short term and the vol market's telling you that it's not scared of an upside break, right? So for me, those things are all pointing to a short-term pullback. Um, I'm not saying it's going to be particularly sinister, but I just think a short-term pullback into some of the support levels that I've outlined on Twitter the other day. And funnily enough, I put this chart out as we were first trying to touch 50,000. My first support level was 46,000 and we literally touched it and bounced immediately off it, right? So that was a good support level, which held on the first test. But you know, these are my support levels, 46, 43, 41 kind of areas. I would love to see a move back down to 43 and then that hold, right? And then if that exhibits some bullish divergence, but we get down to 43 and we hold that level, then we can stage a really nice rally from that level and take us up towards 60, 70, 80,000 over coming months. But right now, I'd say there's a lot of things to me pointing to a potential correction, right? So I've, I've dialed down my risk. I haven't aggressively hedged out all my exposures, but I've definitely taken off a load of my tactical longs and, and I'm watching closely. And, um, you know, if we do start to roll over, maybe I'll sell some more calls in Bitcoin and do it that way. Um, but, I, but I'm kind of getting a little bit concerned short term. Yeah. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, then we'd love to have you join our Macro Insight community. Just visit www.options-insight.com and sign up for your free trial to our live and interactive weekly macro call. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. You'll find more market updates, class highlights from our summer academy, and also video tutorials on anything from options basics to market making fundamentals. You can also connect with me directly. I'm on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. You can follow me on any of those platforms. Or alternatively, feel free to send an email to inquiries at options-insight.com.